Our next story is about heritage, our maritime heritage, which is very important. Anna Sevo is bringing us a story. Back to almost the beginning of time, timber was precious to seafarers. From Noah's Ark to Homer's Odyssey, the Romans, the Vikings, and even our very own Captain Cook, who sailed into Sydney Harbour some 228 years ago. The crew depended on the wood beneath them and the workmanship of the artisan to keep them safe through treacherous waters and God knows what other dangers they had to face. Timber was the key to man conquering the sea. Timber, such as these great Australian hardwoods that until recently were used extensively in the Australian boat building industry. Sadly though, in the last century, timber has been replaced by steel, fibreglass and even concrete. Disappointingly, nowadays, many great timber boats are considered too much hard work to maintain and are allowed to sink. Their only salvage being to be chopped up and sent by the order of the maritime services to the local tip, just like this beautiful fishing trawler. Our solution is first began with sea foam, saving it to only have her life slip between their fingers because of cheap imported bilge water pumps that fail to work when water seeped through the joints in the timber. Happily, there is a success story with this historic ferry, the Curlew, and here's Tara to tell us all about it. I'm standing at Church Point Wharf in Pittwater on the northern beaches of Sydney. Once upon a time, a sprightly ferry named Curlew used to dock here. On my right, we have Scotland Island. The residents of Scotland Island used to depend on Curlew to get to the mainland. She has almost 90 years of consistent service under her belt, a record not bettered by any ferry in the history of Australia. She was built in 1922 by Percy Duncan for the Long Jetty Ferry Service. But time has taken its toll on this once sprightly ferry and sadly she has sunk. When our solutioneers heard of Curlew's plight, they immediately sprang into action and only had a limited amount of time to raise her from the bottom from where she had sunk at her mooring in Gosford. Curlew is the last full-size, well-decked ferry in New South Wales, possibly even Australia a piece of history our solution is don't want to see disappear. So will this old girl have a happy ending? Let's go find out from one of our solution is Harry. So Curlew, tell me what was she like when you found her? Oh Curlew, it's such a sad story really. Um, uh, she was in terrible state. She was sunk and she was in the bottom of the sea for about six months when mm. we found her. But unfortunately we didn't have enough time when we were they told us about her. It was just uh, another day before they would just take her for our scrap. Yeah. And what was the process of rising her from the bottom? We just used a little bit of um, solution here's ideas to get it done. You know, we just basically used truck tubes. Really? Yeah, we just put a lot of truck tubes. tubes. We pump them up with air inside the, um, the hole, and that helped uh, uh, just come out a little bit on the surface. What happened that day, Australia Day, when you rescued her? I think it's better if we um, have a look at the story and uh, you see what happened. Well, uh, fortunately, it hasn't worked out. The guys just walked down on me. We had four pumps and we were ready to do it. And these pumps were working a week ago. These pumps were working one week ago. We tried them again yesterday, we were working. And today, the critical day, Australia Day, here we are. Tomorrow is the deadline and they're coming to pick it up and she's gone once and for all. I think I got a good idea. I'm gonna try to put some planks on the rear where the holes are. When the high tide comes up, it could be that we might just be lucky, maybe, hopefully, that would just give us enough time for the water 
to come out of the inside the boat and hopefully that will just make it float. I don't think so, but I just have to try. It's very difficult because I'm here on my own and it's not easy. I have to hold on to it and hold the nails and hammer everything in and it's very hard. Okay, now there's a big, very big gap in here, which is basically the captain's door. You can see down there, what I might try to do is try to just put some cotton rags in there. And this way, it will probably just stop some of the, the leaking into the boat. And that's what I have to try to do all around. Unfortunately, we do have some broken glasses in some places. So it is a big job, but I just got to try to do it. But. I don't think it's going to work, but at least I can say that I did give it a go. I did try to save this amazing historic boat from the scrap man, from these guys that are coming here tomorrow to pick it up, and now will be the end of it. And we're running out of time because the high tide already is coming in. Well, hopefully this is the last of the plywood that I have to put on. I have done it all around. Everywhere we had some broken windows, I've done that. There's another door on the other side that didn't have anything there. I've done that as well. I've done the one at the back. Everything is done except for this one here. This is the last one. And hopefully this will just do it. Now, look at this. I ran out of nails and I found some copper nails. And they were the original, probably, I don't know. But that's the kind of nails that they used to make this boat 100 years, nearly 100 years ago. And if this doesn't work tonight, this is the last night for Kerlu. So this one here, I hope it's not the last nail in her coffin. Oh. I've done what I could for tonight. This is the last chance that Kerlo has to survive. If this doesn't work, tomorrow morning, the crane is coming to pick it up to go to the tip. I still hope and what I've done is enough to get it afloat. The high tide is coming in now. It's just a matter of hours now and we'll know what happened. Nothing much more I can do. We'll see in the morning. One thing is for sure, if it does work, Kelly owes me a cert. <laughs> Today is D Day for Kelly. In a few seconds, I will know if she made it. I left her overnight last night and I uh, just waited all night, come back now to see if, she's, if she decided to float again and live for another hundred years. This is it. We've done it. Oh my God, look. I got goosebumps. I don't believe it. She's there. She's up. Thank you. Wow! <laughs> Unbelievable. I just don't believe, still don't believe it. It's an incredible story and the best Australian day of my life. But you know what? There's a lot of work to be done in there now. There's holes everywhere. She's leaking from everywhere. 
lots of wounds there to be fixed and I have to get into it very, very quickly and start fixing those holes before the last of the pumps just give up on, on us again. So, yeah, sorry, I gotta go to change and start working. So we're now inside the Kerlu. You can see the mess. Once the boat goes down, the mess is just incredible. Uh, there's a lot of work now to get this boat fixed up. There's holes everywhere. The boat is leaking all over the place. We're gonna have to fix the, all the leaks. We'll just use some cotton material for now and a screwdriver. I've got a few holes fixed up over there. Now we've got another one over here. And uh, this is not too bad actually. It's only a very small one. But you can see it over here. Again, I just use some cotton. Okay, this is the last one of the holes. It will do for now, it's not leaking, but you can't leave it for too long. This is the day after Australia Day. It's a big day for us because we managed to save our history. 90 years of service, you just don't destroy it. I think that we have to try to talk to the uh, maritime and our services, the public services, and try them, try to make them understand that they can't put us in a lot of pressure when it comes to historic gems like the Kerala. We have to save our maritime heritage. So Kerala is floating again. It's unbelievable. We've done it. But uh, now we have to think of the next problem and we have to find a solution for the next problem. And of course the next problem is how we're going to get it out of there and into dry land so we can work on it. Our next stop to our mission to save the Kerlu brings us here in the beautiful Sanctuary Cove and at the Sanctuary Cove boat show. It's beautiful, amazing boats around here everywhere. But of course, new generation boats, nothing like the Kerlu. But we're here because of the Kerlu. And we're gonna meet someone special here at the Sanctuary Cove that had to do a lot with the Kerlu. Let's go and meet up.